Now to Pedro Antunes. He's chief economist at the Conference Board of Canada. Pedro, what's your take? Well, uh, I guess it's a little bit strange to be saying, well, it's good news to see uh, no growth or slightly below the next uh, uh, growth below uh, what was expected. Uh, because in, in essence, uh, what's that that's telling us is that uh, hopefully monetary policy will continue to have success in taming down uh, the economic activity so that we can get the, uh, the inflation numbers down. So I suspect markets will view this favorably, uh, especially as we've seen really strong employment growth over the last couple of months, including uh, data that we have on employment to January, which was phenomenally strong. So the fact that uh, total economic activity uh, is still flattish despite that strength in employment, I think will be, uh, you know, I guess uh, a successful monetary policy news story for markets. And, and here's a number we have not told viewers yet. The uh, StatsCan uh, provides a so-called flash estimate of the of, of January gross domestic product growth. And uh, the what we're hearing from StatsCan is that according to that preliminary estimate, and it is subject to revision, GDP expanded by 0.3% in January, led higher by oil and gas extraction and wholesale trade. Uh, that followed an unexpected 0.1% contraction in December that we've already told viewers about. So what, do, what does that do to the narrative, uh, Pedro, where uh, the preliminary data suggests a, f a reasonably healthy advance in GDP in the month of January? Well, I mean, I, I guess the fact that it's um, uh, in the resource sector, at least, well, we'd have to look at all the details, but uh, th I think that is good news. Where monetary policy has been having success is in, well, we know it really well. We know that in real estate markets, we've seen a, a very significant cooling, and you'd expect to see that. Uh, and we continue to see, at least up until November, uh, the activity on retail sales quite flat. The volume of retail sales has been really quite uh, stable and, and even declining. So that's where the Bank of Canada can have an impact. It's uh, in those areas of, of consumer spending, and that's where it wants to have an impact. Uh, so the fact that um, you know we're seeing a continued rebound on the uh, resource side, on the energy side, I think that just reflects essentially a, 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 a sector that is still recovering uh, and that is benefiting from very high oil prices. So I, I don't think that's necessarily bad news for for the month of uh, uh, for the flash estimate for January. We are almost at the point uh, where we are lapping the first uh, the first inter interest rate increase from the Bank of Canada in this rate hiking cycle. And as we always say, economists uh, tell us that it can it can take, depending on what part of the Canadian economy you're talking about, it can take a full year before an interest rate hike or a series of hikes begins to, to weigh down on economic growth and inflation growth. What are your expectations, Pedro, for later this year as, as we begin to lap interest rate hike number one, interest rate hike number two, and so on? Well, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. I think there's clear evidence that it takes time. The reason it takes time is because, of course, you know, the, the bank's tough tough stance and tough words will uh, hold back consumer spending. They'll think twice about taking on new new debt, uh, and they may want to uh, save rather than spend because of, you know, essentially the, the tight monetary policy. But the real effect is when, uh, you know, essentially mortgages are turned over uh, and you start having that, you know, essentially the, the impact on consumer balance sheets when their debt servicing costs come up. And, and that, as we know, takes a fair amount of time. In fact, uh, most Canadians still take their mortgages over five-year terms. So it take, that's the reason it, ta it takes uh, time to see the full impacts. Uh, I think we're going to continue to see pressure because households in Canada are very indebted, uh, much more indebted, for instance, than, uh, than those in the U.S. Uh, and so this, uh, these interest rate hikes that we've seen over the past year are going to continue to bite uh, on consumers' ability to spend. I think the offset to that is that we have seen really strong employment growth, uh, private sector employment growth has, uh, has done well, and wages are helping to offset some of the erosion that inflation has had on, on household purchasing power. So there's a, a couple of offsets there. There's no doubt, though, that we're going to see, continue to see the pain, for, especially for some households in, into this the rest of this year. 
The Bank of Canada uh, signaled most recently, of course, that it's willing to pause on this uh, cycle of rate hikes depending on the data that it sees. We next hear from the Bank of Canada a week from tomorrow. Uh, since the Bank of Canada indicated its willingness to pause, we've seen a very strong jobs report here in Canada, as we did in the United States as well. Now we've got these GDP numbers, including a flash estimate for January. How, how do you think the data has stacked up uh, since the Bank of Canada made that uh, statement that it was willing to uh, pause on rate hikes? Well, I think the most important uh, number for the Stats Can will be, or sorry, for the Bank of Canada will be the inflation numbers that Stats Can reports on. Uh, those are headed in the right direction. We got a good report uh, in the last numbers from Statistics Canada. So I think that will weigh on uh, the bank's uh, more most most on the bank's decision to to, to continue to, to pause and wait uh, for uh, monetary policy to have its full impact. Uh, the other thing I would say is that it, you know, in my view, uh, the strong employment that we've had has really a lot to do with very strong immigration and arrivals of non-permanent residents through most of 2022. Uh, that has added to the supply of workers and uh, helped fill job vacancies. So in a way, I don't think it's necessarily bad news to see the job, uh, the strong job numbers because this is where we're seeing the pressure on us on the supply side. It's really, uh, you know, our ability to find workers to, to, ma uh, to, to match demand. So I, I think for many sectors, uh, the strong job numbers will help uh, alleviate some of those pressures of excess demand for services and, and many other goods uh, across the economy. Let's finish uh, by circling back to consumer spending. You said that it is key, a, ve a very key input into inflation. I'm seeing that in terms of gross domestic product growth in the month of uh, December, uh, uh, from November, retail trade was one of the uh, uh, one of the strongest upward contributors with growth of uh, uh, 80 basis points, 0.8 percent. Well, that is a little more concerning, and uh, you know I think we had been seeing uh, retail activity easing. Um, you know, again, I think this is part of the challenge that uh, the Bank of Canada has uh, is going to face. Is uh, you know is monetary policy really having an impact? at changing behavior so the consumers save rather than spend. Uh, I think up to now we had seen a fair bit of normalization. You know, there's still been some strength on the service side of the economy, tourism, accommodation and food. People had pent up demand for some of that. But on the retail side, uh, we'd seen a lot of that coming off. So. This, I think, is uh, perhaps one of the more uh, worrisome uh, data points that you've uh, mentioned this morning. 